What is going on, investors? Hopefully, you guys are doing well out there. It is time to talk about Shopify, ticker symbol shop. I tell you what, if you own shares of this, you are not feeling good today. This stock is down over 18% during the regular session. Still got another couple hours to go. That could change. But year to date, this thing is down 35%. In fact, this stock chart looks like a lot of charts that we've looked at on the channel over the last few months. And we've had a monster run on a lot of stocks since the March 2020 lows. A lot of stocks basically crashed just like this one all the way down to about $300 per share, only to peak out back in November over $1,700 per share. Here we are just four months later, we've shaved $1,000 off of this share price. We're all the way down here to $724 per share. We've basically given away this entire leg of growth that we saw after the highs that it made before the pandemic. Wow, this stock, like a lot of others, is starting to give back a ton of its price action. We'll talk about can you buy the dip on this. Now, what's driving this? And that is earnings today. The company announced their Q4 earnings. They came out pre-market. Initially, this stock was actually, believe it or not, up 2.7%. So it's quite a reversal from a pre-market gain of 2.7% to now currently being down over 18%. Revenues came in at $1.38 billion. When we get over to the financials, I'll show those to you. I'll show you the revenues, how the costs are impacting these companies. We'll take a look at the profits. We'll take a look at the net income. We'll also take a look at the balance sheet and the cash flows over at Shopify so you're comfortable with what's going on in the most recent quarter. Now, revenues beat expectations by $40 million, and they were up 41% year-over-year growth. I think investors are comfortable with that growth, and certainly it beat expectations. They also beat on the EPS side. $1.37 per share actually beat expectations by about $0.06 cents per share. So I don't even think it's the earnings that really have people uncomfortable, although when we get over here to the earnings on Shopify, I'll show you some things that I'm actually concerned about and some of the stuff that I saw from an operating perspective that has me a little concerned about what's going on at Shopify. I think what took a moment for investors to digest the fact that this stock was up pre-market and look, the entire market is down today and it's in kind of a downtrend. And so it doesn't surprise me that a stock like this has pulled back. But I think one of the missteps by management is when you come in here and start reading about 2022 guidance, They here's so 2022 outlook starts up here. We got one paragraph, two paragraphs, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, they go on for like 10 paragraphs about their guidance. That is not a good sign. When management rambles on this much about how they're not really sure about things, COVID-19 really pulled forward a lot of demand for Shopify, not only from an e-commerce perspective, but obviously from their customers' perspective, needing Shopify stores, needing e-stores and things like that. Well, they go on forever about how this was a tailwind and now it might be a headwind and all this stuff. I think this is what has investors worried a little bit. The other thing that I think has this and should have investors very worried about is this starting, we're starting to see Google to limit Android ad tracking. They're going to be a little bit more slow than Apple. Apple implemented these changes last year, sometime in the spring, summer of last year. And we've looked at Facebook stock absolutely fall off the map, just like Shopify. And that is because the iOS changes don't allow for targeting trafficking. And why am I talking about Facebook and Google? Is that because if you own a Shopify store, the number one way you're likely to drive traffic to it is through Google and Facebook. Now, there's organic ways to do that through both those platforms, but a lot of people on Shopify are doing it through paid advertisement. And because we're seeing a decrease in the effectiveness of those ads due to ad tracking limited on the iOS and eventually Android, that has Shopify owners concerned that also has them pulling back on their ad spend as they pull back on that ad spend that obviously impacts Google stock, but more specifically Facebook stock. And as they pull back on ad spend, that is going to impact Shopify's revenues and their earnings. There is a lot going on here with this company and a lot more than what meets the eye, I think. This press release talks about how they're warning on this decelerated growth. I talked about how they rambled on for 10 paragraphs here. I read it for you, but I think it's kind of boring. All It can be summed up that they're basically not sure. They're a little skeptical, just like how Google is a little skeptical about the future, but more specifically, Facebook is skeptical 
skeptical about the future because of this ad tracking thing. I think that is impacting Shopify's business tremendously. Now, let's jump into these numbers. These are very important. We got $1.38 billion worth of revenue. Again, that's up over 40% from the previous year where we're actually south of a billion dollars. So they've done a really nice job over the last year to cross that $1 billion mark, in fact, all the way up to 1.3. This is a very, very high margin business. So the fact that this company has a big multiple, okay, you still got a price to earnings basis well over 100 on this one. You still got a massive $100 billion valuation on this one, okay, probably doesn't factor in today's drop, but it looks like potentially we might go south of $100 billion valuation. One of the reasons why is because you have very high gross profit, okay, off of $1.3 billion worth of revenue. We spent just $687 million to get $692 million worth of gross profit. That is up considerably over the previous year. We were sitting at $504 million. For the last 12 months, you went from $1.5 billion, this is gross profit, up nearly a billion dollars to $2.5 billion. Now, unfortunately, with Shopify, that's not the only expenses. They have operating expenses. They have sales and marketing, research and development, general administrative, and they also have transaction and loan losses. That's essentially based on credit that they might ex extend businesses. They, some businesses, quite frankly, default on this. And we see those actually accelerated quite a bit over the last period. But all these other expenses are accelerating rapidly. Take a look at our selling and marketing budget went from 154 all the way up to 275. Look at our total operating expenses went from 391 all the way up to 678. And so that's a problem. When you have $1.38 billion worth of revenue, you minus off $692 million in costs. Now you got to minus off another $678 million in costs. Well, unfortunately, in your number one revenue generating quarter, the fourth quarter, where a lot of gift giving and a lot of online shopping happens, you only had income from operations come in at $14.4 million. That is a big problem when you have a $100 billion market cap on your company. Company. Now, for the year ended, it paints a little bit different story, okay? For the year ended, you actually had pretty, I wouldn't say solid, but it's way better than $14 million on a quarterly basis run rate. You had $268 million in income from operations. So this company made the vast majority of their profit well before Q4. Q4 was a quarter where this company really sunk a lot of cost into their business. And it remains to be seen if this company is going to be able to deliver on that investment in future quarters because we talked about the guidance was murky at best. And then we have the headwinds of Google and Facebook really having to make a lot of changes due to the fact that you can't track as well on your advertisements. There's a lot of headwinds instead of tailwinds that shot this stock up from a $7, $700 stock all the way up to $1,700 stock. Well, now those tailwinds are starting to turn into headwinds as we see the impact of the financials. I tell you what, you don't really see it on the earning side. You don't really see it on the gross profit side, but you come all the way down to income from operations and it's really, really evident. Now, this company on their net income side printed a big, gigantic number because they have this other income. I think this is the firm IPO. I think Shopify had a stake in that IPO and it looks like they benefited by about $2.8 billion. So this company actually had really, really strong net income and that is where you could see, I think this is non gat EPS, so I think they're stripping this out. But when you come from a traditional valuation metric, this company had over $2.9 billion worth of net income, but the vast majority of that, in fact, the almost all of it comes from the fact that they made a really savvy investment in another company. So it's just something to keep in mind. Now, from a balance sheet perspective, it you do not really have anything to worry about at all from Shopify. So that's what makes this stock maybe a little bit different than some other tech stocks out there. The fact that the stock has really fallen off a cliff, well, this company has a completely clean balance sheet because I'll show it to you in a minute from the cash flow perspective. They've actually tapped the stock a lot. They've actually done a nice job over at Shopify, actually raising money using the stock. And I actually like that. Now, it, it might be coming home to roost to a certain degree as you've issued more shares. You've had a lot more shares outstanding over the last year or so. And so that could be creating some downward pressure. But what it's done is it's made this company have a crystal clear balance sheet. Okay, you have well over $7.7 .7 billion worth of cash on the balance sheet. That's up up over the previous year. I'll show you where that came from here in a moment, but you have almost no liabilities. In fact, total liabilities on this company is at $1.5 billion. So they could wipe out their entire liabilities with a stroke of a pen and, and not even feel it as a company from a cash perspective. Very, very healthy from that sense. Now, from a cash flow perspective, we pulled down this 
gigantic net income number. And we talked about how the vast majority of that actually came from this net unrealized gain on an equity or other investments. So 2.9 of the 2.9 roughly came from this other investment that the company made. And again, off the top of my head, I think it's a firm. But what we see here is we get to add back in some stock-based compensation, $330 million compared to about 246 last year. So you've seen that accelerated. Obviously with revenues accelerating, you'd expect that. From a cash flow perspective, company actually looks pretty good. You went from 424 in positive cash flows last year. Now you've got up over $504 million worth of positive cash flows. Again, that is very strong cash flows, but we have to keep in mind, we do have a very, very healthy market cap on this one. We're probably oh, still over a billion dollars on this one. And so off $500 million worth of free cash, a hundred billion dollar company. I'll let you decide if that's overvalued or not. In my book, it's still pretty much overvalued. And I think the stock market is trying to tell investors that as well. Now, what I talked about as well, the company's done a nice job proceeds from public equity offerings. This is essentially the company doing following offerings on their shares, taking their shares and selling them into the public markets and making money off of that. So they made over 1.5 billion this year. Last year, they raised $2.5 billion. So this is where the company is generating a lot of cash. We actually talked about how this company had over $1.6 billion in financing activities. The company's generating the vast majority of their cash flowing onto this balance sheet, primarily through issuing the stock and selling it. So just something that you want to keep in mind moving forward with Shopify, as the stock continues to pull back, they might not have the ability to do that. But when I look at this balance sheet, as long as they don't want to get crazy, and really go toe to toe with someone like Amazon and a CapEx spend, they have plenty of money on this balance sheet to run the business as it stands now. Again, notwithstanding trying to really scale up this business from a fulfillment center perspective or something like that, or in a major acquisition standpoint, the company has plenty of cash and it looks to be doing fine in that sense. But what's not doing fine is this stock price. We have made, as it's clearly seen here on the channel, is you have made a monster down leg on this one. And this is what we're looking at, quite frankly, through the entire lens of the stock market. This is not unique to Shopify. The fact that this stock was making higher lows all across the board. The minute that trend broke back in January, look what happens. This is what has a lot of investors very cautious in the stock market right now, because there's a lot of stocks. In fact, the vast majority of stocks that I'm looking at have made this broken trend line. Okay. You were on this upper trend line. And then once you broke it, you went down by nearly 40%. Okay. And it happens very quick. I mean, this upper leg happened over the course of a year and we basically given it all back in a month. This is why you need to be very careful when you're investing in stocks, even when you're investing in the longer term. If you blew all your money on this stock, all at these highs, it's going to take, quite frankly, a long time for this stock to get back because these down legs go a heck of a lot faster than these up legs. Okay, now from a technical perspective, we have hit an area that makes a little bit of sense from a technical perspective. There's an area down here at 720. It doesn't su surprise me that this stock kind of is consolidating here. Is this the firmest area I've ever seen? Absolutely not. The first firm area of support, believe it or not, and some of you guys are going to want to maybe cup your ears and not hear this, press the mute button. The first area of clear support on this stock is all the way down here at $304. Now, I usually get a lot of comments on my channel and they're saying there's no way the stock can go down there. I'm not saying that it's going to go down there. I'm just telling you that the first area of support where I would like legitimately buy this one before it showed a sign of reversal all, it's not here until $300 per share, okay? So this one would have to go down over 50% more. Now, not necessarily saying that's going to happen, but what we need to see with this stock is a sign of reversal. Notice on our massive up leg, what we were doing along here was making a series of higher lows. All across the board here, there is some slight deviations with these candles, but it recovered within a day or two to all of a sudden start making higher lows and the stock would just continue its uptrend. That's what an uptrend 
trend is. It's a series of higher lows on the bottom of this green line right here. All, all along here, the bottoms, where it bottoms out is essentially a little bit higher than where it bottomed out maybe a week, maybe a month or so before. Now you're seeing the absolute reverse of that. You're seeing lower highs. So all across this down leg, the peaks of the highs are now lower than the previous peaks. And so a sign of, of a reversal is now a higher high. OK, and I get a lot of comments on my channel. Why do I got to wait for the stock to go back up? You're trying to put the odds in your favor. OK, this isn't gambling. This isn't something that we need to take an uncalculated risk at. We can put the odds in our favor if we wait for a sign of a reversal or a sign of a reversal on the Shopify stock in the shorter term would have to take you up over nine hundred dollars per share. Yeah, you would have to let the stock run over two hundred dollars per share before it it really started, it wouldn't be certain confirmation, but it'd be far better, in my opinion, than to come in here and step in here and buy the dip at 730. Because if this stock acts like PayPal stock, if this stock acts like Alibaba stock, if this stock acts like Facebook stock, well, it's going to just continue to go down. And like I said, the first area of firm support is all the way down here at $330 per share. That would be the first spot where I would buy this one on just a this downward trend line with no sign of reversal. And I wouldn't do a hefty position at that point, but the valuation at that point based on revenues and profits and market share that this company has and competitive advantage that this company has, I think that would be worth it down here. So we're not near kind of the unblinded by the dip. We're waiting for a sign of reversal. You need to put up successive candles up over and above each other, something like this. Notice now we're starting to create an uptrend with this stock. That is what you're waiting for with Shopify. Be patient. We're on a daily view here. If you want to change this to a weekly view, you're looking for the same thing. Look how big red candles these are. Okay. Until these show signs of reversing, you have to assume these red candles are going to continue to show up. You could also look at this on a monthly view. Look how big those candles are. You have to wait until the stock reverses until you step in and buy. Okay. You don't want to be the people that bought Facebook the day it went down. You don't want to be the people that bought PayPal stock the day it went down because those people are down another 20 or 30% on those investments. In this market, you're waiting for signs of reversals. You're waiting for higher highs. You're waiting for higher sets of lows. Right now, we are not seeing that with Shopify. And in fact, if I had to place a bet on this one, I think it's likely to head lower. And if it does, it increases the odds, obviously, of getting down to about $300 per share, which would be the first price that, quite frankly, I would step in before you actually saw that reversal chart show up. That was Shopify. I wish I could be here like we've been over the last year or two and saying, hey, this stock's locked in an uptrend. You can buy the dips on here. Well, you can't do that anymore. This market is giving these gains back and you want to be patient because like I talked about, these losses happen a lot faster than the gains. You can always be patient and get in on a bull market. The bear market will wipe you out in a heartbeat as we've seen with a number of stocks including Shopify. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. We'll be back again soon with more. Good luck with your investments.